Hey guys, so I had a really cool project the other day. I, uh, I took a broken Hudson and I bought a 135 millimeter frame from Micro Mortar Warehouse and I put them together. So I just wanted to let you see how I did it. So the first thing I picked up was the Rolling Parrot Drone Propeller. Uh, they're larger than the Hudson and they have a little more angle and better overall thrust. The next thing I picked up was the 8.5 millimeter fast rating uh, cordless motors from Micromoto Warehouse. Um, the next thing I got was the uh, Ultra Micro FPV transmitter and camera. Um, it's a little pricey, but it's super light. It's only about four grams. So I also picked up the 480 milliamp hour uh, LiPo 1S battery uh, with the JST connector. I got that from Micromoto Warehouse as well. Uh, it has a max rating of ADC. And then lastly, I have the frame itself, which again I got from Micromoto Warehouse. And that's pretty much it. You're just going to need a broken Hubson on top of that. So some things you're going to want to note are uh, the clockwise and counterclockwise positions that the Hubson motors are in. You're going to want to match them with the motors that you get. Uh, the ones that I got from Micromotor Warehouse, uh, the white and the black and the blue and the red correlate with the ones on the Hubson. So you can switch them right on. Also keep in mind, in the photo, I have the motors facing down, so I have the quadcopter upside down, which means that the solder goes on the underside of the chip. Basically, here I have the unfinished frame. Um, pretty much, it's pretty self-explanatory. You have your nuts and bolts down there. You're going to want to connect the little motor mounts to the frame, and then after they're connected, you're going to want to shove the motors uh, right through there until it fits. Um, these motors are eight and a half millimeters, so they're super tight, but they do fit and they're pretty snug once you do finally get them in. Uh, I ended up just pushing the bottom of the motors down on the table against the mounts to get them right in there. So here we are with the finished frame. Um, I don't have the top plate on, but you can see I have the chip upside down. Um, and the solders are underneath because now the motors are facing upwards. Uh, basically, the next step I took was I desoldered that little, uh, that little plug that plugs the um, battery into the chip, and I put on a red one, the JST, and I'm using that one because the bigger batteries all use these, and everyone recommends it that you know these little connectors don't put off enough power. So here you can see how I mounted the FPV camera transmitter. Uh, I just took a little bit of double-sided 3M tape and put it towards the front of the camera so that when I push it on there, the camera's tilted upwards a little bit for when you're going forward. So in this picture, I try to show you how I connected the FPV camera transmitter directly to the battery cord. I spliced into the red and the white wires and I connected the white to the red and the black to the black, so positive negative, and I plug that two pin connector right into the FBV camera. And I just want to note that with this setup, I get zero noise. Uh, lots of people with their own rigs are getting lots of noise and they're trying to come up with all kinds of solutions for it. But I think with this FBV camera transmitter, there's some sort of filter in there because I can go right to the battery and it works really good. Oh my god. So the next project I'm going to post is going to be a Nano QX uh, FPV flight controller which allows you to go into full rate mode like a bigger quadcopter and it's going to be a lot faster because it's going to have the Dark Edition 17,000 KV motors. It's also going to record video and it's going to be FPV capable. So. Uh, if you like the videos, um, the next one's going to be a little more involved. Uh, so thanks a lot for watching. Subscribe, like if you can. Thanks. Bye.